Brothers, a copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Nevada County Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars to broadcast 261 regarding a murder. Investigate shooting on the Tohoe Ukai Road. Call an ambulance if needed. That is all, Harmon. I've been talking about Rio Grande Petroleum products once a week for several years. I've told you what Rio Grande cracked police car performance gasoline means in the efficient, economical operation of your cars. I've been happy to introduce to you Real Lube, a great motor oil that lives up to all our promises, all your expectations. Week after week, year in and year out, we have valiantly tried to make this program, which is an institution in radio, as exceptional as the product whose sale makes the program possible. Many thousands of motorists who dial their radios and drive their cars with the same loyalty to Rio Grande show us that we have succeeded. Yet I have personally encountered some friends and acquaintances who have lauded the entertainment and civic value of calling all cars, yet admitted that they hadn't gotten around to trying Rio Grande products. Will you in this coming week make one purchase at your Rio Grande dealer's a quart of Rio Lube or a tank full of Rio Grande crack, the size of the purchase is of no consequence in this test. We of Calling All Cars want an expression of your interest and friendliness in the program. Will you promise yourself to stop at a Rio Grande station once this week as a personal favor to us of Calling All Cars? We feel that's not too much to ask and will certainly appreciate it. And now, on with your show. tonight has been taken from the confidential files of Sheriff C.J. Tobiason of Nevada County. We have therefore asked Sheriff Tobiason to prepare a foreword to our program. It is rather difficult at times for a police officer to avoid getting pessimistic about the increase in crime in this country. No section seems to be immune to crime or free from the criminal element. We have spent billions of dollars on crime prevention and the punishment of offenders but we have not been able to definitely hammer into the mind of the criminal that he can't beat the game. How any sensible man can willfully and deliberately commit a crime and hope to get away with it is a mystery to me. Yet every day, thousands try it. It is my belief, however, that if we had more judges and juries like the ones who tried the criminals whose story we are about to hear, it would be a whole lot easier to convince the potential criminal that crime is a losing game. How the men in tonight's story learned this fact, we shall see as the program progresses. Near midnight on January 11, 1936, Christian Myers and his fiancée, Glennon Cape, were parked on the Tahoe Ukiah Highway discussing plans for their forthcoming marriage. Just think, Glennon. This time next month, we'll be Mr. and Mrs. Christian Myers. Mr. and Mrs.? Christian Meyer. Mrs. Glennon Meyer. <laughs> sounds rather nice, doesn't it, Christian? Say, nice. Say, that sounds perfect, honey. You sure you still don't want a big church wedding, dear? Of course not, darling. Oh, would be nice, but why, that's not the important thing. The important thing is that we're to be married. <laughs> Besides, you know, there's a lot of expense to a church wedding. Oh, gosh, honey, you're swell. I hope you'll always feel that way. No, don't worry. I will. Because you'll always be that way. <laughs> Level-headed, far-seeing, thrifty. Ah, oh, that's my girl. You know, honey, you're the kind of a girl that every boy dreams of meeting. Oh. Kiss me. Oh, you darling, you. It's all too perfect. You know, dear, if, if anything ever happened to you... I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> well, only nothing's going to happen to me, silly. 
Now, whatever made you say that? Well, I don't know. <laughs> just thinking. Well, you just get thoughts like that out of your pretty little head. Shall we go? You know, it's getting chilly. And it must be almost 12. <laughs> okay, dear. So you know about that something happening to me? I might inherit a million dollars. <laughs> Make it two million. <laughs> then you can afford to smoke big black cigars. <laughs> yeah, or buy a new car. <laughs> this darned old heap won't start. Well, try again. Maybe it's just cold. Mm-hmm. Or worn out. <laughs> well, looks as all has to get out and crank it. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> such are the joys of motoring, dear. <laughs> And I don't see anything so funny about it. Oh, if you could see yourself, you'd laugh, too. Well, let's turn the lights off. It'll be easier to crank, and then you won't be able to see me and laugh. Now, go on, honey. Turn them off. All right, Grumpy. What do you want me to do? You just sit there and shove that gas bottle up and down when I tell you to. And hang on, because here I go. Well, be careful. It might kick back. I'll kick it if it does. Come on, darling. Once more now. Don't give up. <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! It worked. Now, ah, so you thought I couldn't do it, didn't you? Well, I'll admit there was a minute that I had my do. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, don't I get any reward? Sure. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, you're not any happier than I am, John. Oh, honey, your hands are cold. Well, it's cold out here. Well, then hang on, because we're about to take off. <laughs> be a monkey's uncle. What's the matter now? Oh, we must be stuck in the dirt or something. You know, Mother always warned me about soft shoulders. No, 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 no. What are we going to do? I don't know, dear. Just wait till somebody comes along and get him to pull us out, I guess. Now, why does everything have to happen to me? Well, here comes the car down the road now. Get out and flag them, Christian. Oh, I do. Gosh, I hope they stop. You too. Hey, stop! Hey, we're stuck! Wait, you're wrong. No, no, they see me, darling. Stop. Hey, fella, can you get us to pull out of here? What's the matter? Oh, we're stuck over here on the soft shoulder. You'd better hurry. There are two highwaymen holding up cars back there. Huh? Highwaymen? Oh, holy smoke. Hey, are they headed this way? Yeah. Hey, hey wait a minute. Our car, it, it won't start. Oh, my gosh, I forgot. Hey, come back here. Hey, my battery said I... Oh, they're gone. They didn't hear you. Now, never mind, darling. I can crank it. I'll do something. Don't get nervous. We'll get away in time. Oh, please hurry, Christian. Give it more gas on the wheel, dear. All right. Switch on? Yes, but try it again. I am. Christian. Christian, here comes the car. Look. Dear, maybe it's not them. Now, you duck down until it passes, and I'll stand in back. Whoever it is, maybe they'll go on by. Oh, it's them, all right. Come on, let's run. Now, wait, dear. Maybe they'll go on. No, it, it isn't too late yet. They stopped the motor and coming back. Let's make a run for it. Okay, darling. Come on. They haven't seen us yet. Come on, we can hide over there. All right, I'm coming. Just a minute, you. I seen you get out of that car. Come back here, I'll fill you full of lead. Oh, I was just going over here for a minute. I... Yeah, well, you can just come back over here. Well, what do you want? If it's money you're asking. Ah, shut up. We'll get what we want. Look him over, kid. Sure. Yeah, don't even carry a wallet. Where do you keep your money? I haven't got any with me. No? Well, I ought to get... Wait a minute. Who's over there? Come on, Anna, I'll let you have it. Yes, sir. I'm coming. Well, I'll be a... A dame. Hmm. Hiya, cutie. Hey, listen, you two. Now, you leave her out of this, see? She hasn't got any money. Oh, no? Well, that's all right. Come here, girlie. Well... Pity, ain't she? Now, I'm yeah. warning you. You mugs keep away from her. You're warning who? You'll keep your mouth shut if you know what's good for you. Come here, kid. Hold the gun on this set. Sure. Now, for you, baby. Hmm. <laughs> you know, you're too good looking to be wasting your time on a sap like this. Oh, you... Shut up. You think you can learn to like me? Don't you touch her off. <laughs> Listen to him. What's the matter, baby? You bastard. Come here. Come here. I said come here. I told you to leave her alone. Get away with this. I'm going to get away, honey. Get away from the police. Get away from that car. I'll blow your brains out. Look out. He's rushing you. Oh, my God. Yeah. The minute you took your eyes off Mimi, let go of me and started for you. You murderer. 
You killed him. So what? Trying to shove me around, Stop huh? It. Stop it. Look out. She's swinging a crane. Hey, cut that out. I'll kill you. Oh, yeah. There. Yeah, maybe that'll hold you. Yeah. That went out of sound. And that poor little pool. Toss her over the bank. Yeah. Say, what about the guy? Throw him over, too. He's already dead. Yeah, that's a good idea. It won't be fun for a couple of days, and we'll be safe by then. Come on, give me a hand. Sure. Yeah, she's pretty, ain't she? Yeah. You know, I could have gone for her. Too bad she acted the way she did. Yeah, she's getting what's coming to her. You're telling me. You ready? Okay. All right. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. Better hurry. Somebody might come along. Yeah, take your feet. Come on, let's go. All right. Up there you go. Hey, this guy's heavy, ain't he? He's a dead weight, huh? Huh? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Dead weight. That's good. <laughs> Poor sap, he ought to have more sense. Well, maybe he thought the gun wasn't loaded. Okay. Toss him over. <laughs> Look at them bunts, will you? Okay, come on, let's get going. Let's get the call. Yeah. Gosh, they sure cause us a lot of trouble and for nothing. Yeah. Say, wait a minute. Maybe we better shut the car over, too. It's a good idea. No use leaving any evidence around, huh, Marty? Nah. <laughs> Nothing but a pile of junk anyway. Come on, push. Uh, it's worse than a truck. Stop your talking and shove, will you? Uh, I'm it's moving. Up. I'm shoving. Hey, look out. You're standing right into a tree. Ah, uh, well, I stop it. I can't stop it. I think uh, you've gone nuts. That's a fine kettle of fish. Well, it won't hurt to leave it there. Come on. Okay. It would have been better if we'd gotten the car out of the way, too. Uh, quit worrying. You're worse than an old lady. Button your lip, will you? Go on, get in, get in. You gonna drive, Monty? What do you think? Yeah, where are we going now? I don't know. Let's go get something to eat. I'm hungry. Hey? Yeah, it's a good idea. You know, exercise makes me hungry, too. <laughs> But as the two bandits drove off halfway down the ravine, Glenn and Kate was regaining consciousness and realized the two desperados were leaving. Slowly, she opened her eyes. A tree had stopped her fall and kept her from certain death. Cautiously, she climbed to the road and, peering back into the gloom, saw the body of her sweetheart tangled in the brush, only a few feet from the road. Christian. Christian, darling. Speak to me. Say something. Never mind. Me, honey. Save yourself. It's all right, Christian. They've gone. Oh, you poor darling. Do you hurt badly? Would you like some water? No. I'm all right. Go on. Get some help. But, but I can't leave you here. No, no, no. Don't cry, honey. I'm all right. Only, only please hurry, dear. I'll, I'll hurry, darling. I'll run all the way. Put this coat under your head. Uh, thanks, darling. No, I'm going to sleep. Oh, Christian. Oh, Christian. Please don't leave me. Please don't. <laughs> Glenn and Kate started the mile-and-a-half walk into Nevada City. Fortunately, a passing motorist saw the girl and took her to the sheriff's office where Under Sheriff William D. Woods was on duty. Well, young lady, what happened to you? They killed him. They shot him with a shotgun. What? Here, here sit down. Here, take this chair. Oh, please, get, get an ambulance. Do something. Well, of course, but tell me what happened. Who shot who? Where? On the Tahoe Ukiah Highway, about a mile or two from here. Two men in a green sedan. They tried to hold us up, and then they shot Christian. He's dying, I tell you. Let me smell your breath, young lady. Well, you're almost hysterical. They've killed him, and you just stand there. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Oh. Fainted. Okay, girly, but I hope you're telling the truth. Hello, Doc. This is Woods down at the sheriff's office. I think there's been a murder. I'm sending the ambulance out. You better go along. Yeah, the Tahoe Ukiah Highway, about a mile or two out of town. 
Okay. Hello, Jack. Take a run out the Tahoe Ukiah Highway and pick up a strip. I don't know there's a girl in here. Says somebody was murdered. How should I know? Yeah, yeah, the doc's on his way over. Okay. Well, then let's see what I can do for you, young lady. Miss Cape recovered, and together she and Under Sheriff Woods awaited the return of the ambulance. In the meantime, she related the story in detail. There were two points in particular that interested Woods. They, they drove a green sedan with the left fender bent badly, and the left side of the windshield was broken. I think the car was a Ford. Can you give me any kind of a description of the two men? No, not, not much. They, they both wore masks. One was a little taller than the other. The thing that impressed me most was their voices. Yeah? I'll never forget them. I can hear them now. I'll always hear them. They were grating, piercing, and rasping. They, they weren't human. Anything else? No. No, except behind their masks I could see their eyes. They were small like pig eyes. Mean and hard. Well, that'll be enough for now. You lie down and try to get some rest. A little later, the ambulance returned with the body of Christian Myers. Although badly wounded, he was still alive. Hospital surgeons worked frantically to save him, but death claimed his victim at 6.30 in the morning. Then in Cape returned to her home, while under Sheriff Woods and Deputy Sheriff Larson drove to the lonely stretch of the highway where the grim drama of the night before had been enacted. Uh, this is the place. Jack said it was a mile and a half. This is Myers' car in the ditch. Yeah, this is the most cold-blooded thing I've ever heard of. I'll well, say. Imagine shooting that kid like that. You know, I'll never let any kids of mine park out on a lonely road like this. Yeah? How are you going to stop them? Well, come on, maybe we can find something interesting. That shotgun shell ought to be around here someplace. Okay. Just the same. Kids ought to think before they park. Did you when you were a kid? Well, that was different. We didn't have automobiles in those days. Highwaymen and gangsters like we do now. Hey, what's that over there? Why? Oh, never mind. It's just a rock. Say, listen, they had hold-up men in the old days just like we do now. Point was, we didn't have to drive several miles away from home if we wanted to be alone. I used the parlor. Mm. <laughs> I did, too, for that matter. Mm. Here's where the boy was shot. Yeah. And the empty shell ought to be around here. There it is. Well, maybe we can tell something from this. Hope so. What about the car? Pete's coming out for it. The girl said the battery was dead and it wouldn't start. Well, might as well go. Nothing else around here. I guess not. There might be some fingerprints on the car. Uh, we can check that later. Uh, footprints are all messed up now. Yeah. I don't see any tire tracks that we can do anything with. Yeah, I'd like to get my hands on those, too. So would I. Well, come on. Let's check this empty shell. Back at the sheriff's office, the empty shotgun shell was checked for the serial number and it was found to have been sold by the Alpha Hardware Store in Grass Valley. However, the proprietor could give no further information. Sheriff Carl J. Tobiason was ill and confined to his bed, but news of the murder caused him to report for duty at once and personally direct the search. The Grass Valley Union, the local newspaper, printed the headline, Two Men Wanted for Murder. The following Monday afternoon, Sheriff Tobiason received a telephone call. Sheriff Tobiason? Yeah? Who's this? Uh, this is Mr. Nelson of the Zebrite Mine. I, I think maybe I got a lead on that murder case. Well, that's fine. What is it? Well, uh, this morning, two men came in here looking for a job. Oh, you two want a job mining, huh? Yeah, yeah. We've been out of work for a spell now, and we got to find something to do. Mm, had much experience? Sure. We've been mining for years now. Oh, where? Oh, around, you know, here and there, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada. Yeah, we can do anything, mister. Mm, I see. By the way, what's that shotgun in your car for? What's it to you? Hey, wait a minute, will you? Uh, uh, the shotgun, huh? Yes. Why, uh, we just came from a wedding, ain't that right, man? <laughs> yeah, and some wedding, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I ain't got nothing for you around here right now. Oh. Uh, leave your names, and uh, you might drop back in a few weeks. You never can tell. Okay. 
Oh, uh, by the way, here's our addresses if you want us. Yeah, and thanks. Not at all. So long. Then about an hour afterwards, I was looking over the paper and saw about the murder. They was driving a 1928 green Ford sedan with a, with a bent left front fender and the left side of the windshield broken. I'm sure it was them, all right. Yeah, it sure sounds like them. What address did they leave? It's, uh, uh, 118 Murphy Street, uh, Grass Valley. 118 Murphy Street, Grass Valley. Well, you've been a big help to us, Mr. Nelson. We'll chase this down, let you know. Uh, and let me know if there's anything else I can do to help, will you? I'll do that. What'd you find out? Who was it? Woods, I think we got something. Get the Bureau of Investigation in Sacramento on the teletype, will you? Monte Newman and Marriott Newman, address 118 Murphy Street, Grass Valley. Both have served prison terms in the state penitentiaries of Idaho, Nevada, and California. We'll give additional information if you need it. With this information, Sheriff Tobiason was certain he was on the trail of the right men. But it seemed too easy. Men who murder don't leave addresses where they can be found. However, he sent Woods, accompanied by the Grass Valley Chief of Police, Chief Bonds, to pay a visit to 118 Murphy Street. Well, there's somebody home because I can smell something cooking. Yeah, me too. Here comes somebody now. I'm glad you have on plain clothes. I got a plan. Yes? Uh, are either one of your sons at home? Who are you? Why, uh, we're friends of the boys. I've never seen you before. What do you want? Neither one of them home? No, they're downtown on an errand for me. Oh, I'm sorry. What for? Well, we came to see him about a job. Oh, what kind of a job? Uh, mining. Uh, yeah, yeah, we understand they're looking for work and we can put them to work. Well, they ain't here, but they want jobs, both of them. Oh, I'm sure they do. Well, I'll tell you what. When they come back, have them call at this address and we'll see that they get work. Oh, thank you. It was nice of you to come around. I'll... I'll give them this address. Well, uh, we'll be expecting them. The officers waited, but as they expected, the two Newman brothers failed to put in an appearance. A thorough search was made of the house and car left in the garage, but unfortunately nothing of consequence was found. Although without sufficient evidence, Sheriff Tobias and asked for complaints, charging them with murder and caused circulars to be printed and distributed from Canada to Mexico. Then in quick succession, reports came flying in. Sheriff Rayburn of Riverside County. We searched the house in Riverside that the Newman brothers occupied. They'd already left. Octavia, Arizona, reporting on the Newman brothers' case. We're working for a contractor under aliases of Art Cropper and Mark Walden. Saw the pictures in the detective ma magazine and left town. Both men have altered their appearance. One has changed the color of his hair, and the other has grown a mustache. Superior Arizona reporting on Newman Brothers have sufficient reason to believe that Newman Brothers are employed at the Molly Blemio Mine at Climax, Colorado. And so in June 1936, Sheriff Tobiason sent word to Sheriff Charles E. Calvert of Leadville, Colorado, to investigate the last report. I've sent for them, Sheriff Calvert. They've been here in a minute. Thanks. Have a cigarette? No, thank you. No. Here they come now. You sent for us? I sent for you. You're wanted for murder. Murder? Say, what are you talking about? You got us all wrong, mister. We ain't murdered nobody. Hey, heck no, we wouldn't have harmed nothing. No, not even a fly. We'll see about that. Come on. I advise you to not try anything funny. You understand? Now, look, mister, you're making a big mistake. Yeah? Maybe you can explain why you left Grass Valley in such a big hurry. Oh, there. Yeah, go ahead. Why, uh, uh... Well, you see, me and my brother was out shooting deer with a flashlight, and we thought, because it wasn't the season, that was why the police was looking for us. Sure, that's it. That's why we left town. That's a good story. I imagine Sheriff Tobias will get a big kick out of it. Now, come along. <laughs> two Newman brothers were returned to Nevada City to stand trial. It still remained necessary to prove that these were the two men in question. In the jail, Sheriff Tobias and hung a curtain, and behind the curtain placed 12 men, among them the two Newman brothers. Then, giving each of the 12 men a few sentences to read, he asked Glennon Cape to witness the show-up. Now then, Miss Cape, I want you to just relax and listen. Close your eyes. What's all this for, Sheriff Tobias? You'll understand in a few minutes. At least I hope you will. But what do you want me to do? Not a thing. Just sit and listen. 
I've arranged some of the prisoners behind that screen over there, and they're going to read some bits of philosophy. I just wanted you to be sure, that's all. Are the two men who murdered Christian back there? Answer me. Now, Miss Cape, just sit still. I'm about to start the show. All right, Woods, start them out. Okay. Number one. We start reading. Crime does not pay. Next. A criminal never reaps the harvest of his gains. Next. I shall not kill. That's him. That's one of the men who killed Christian. I'd know his voice anywhere. I'll kill him. Please, please, Miss Cape, stay in your seat. I'll all take care of him. But it's one of those men yes, over there. Yes, I understand. Go ahead, Woods. Number four. Read your line. The way of a transgressor is hard. Next. Prison or death awaits the hardened criminal. Next. The wheels of justice never stop. Next. The wrongdoer is a menace to society. That's the other one. They're both behind that screen. Oh, Sheriff. There, there now, Miss Cape. I know how you feel. But we must be sure. Okay, Woods. Rearrange the prisoners and pull the curtain back. Okay. You see, Miss Cape, we have to be sure it would be a terrible miscarriage of justice to try the wrong man. After all, murder is a serious crime. Yes, and a terrific loss to someone. There'll never be anyone like Christian. I understand. Are you all set, Woods? All set. And pull the... All set. And pull the... All set. And pull the curtains back. Curtains back. Curtains back. Now then, Miss Cape, see if you can pick out the two men whose voices you identified. I, I know their eyes any place. It's, it's the fourth man and the ninth man. All right. The fourth man, repeat his line. The wrongdoer is a menace to society. The ninth man, repeat his line. I shall not kill. Oh, Sheriff Tobias, and may I go? I can't stand it any longer. Those are the two men. I'll, I'll never forget either of them. What are you talking ah, about? you got us all wrong. Just run away. Oh, shut up, you two. Shut up. <laughs> Larson, will you take Miss Cape out, please? Yes, sir. Oh, when the trial comes up, I'll have to ask you to testify. You will, won't you, Miss Cape? Well, I'll do anything that'll keep those two horrible men in jail. <laughs> anything. Thank you. All right, Woods, take them out. <laughs> Just a moment, we shall hear the conclusion of our story. In this brief interlude, remember, it's 36 days until New Year's Day. But you have made a resolution. Whereas I enjoy calling all cars, and whereas my car enjoys Rio Grande cracked gasoline and Rio Lube motor oil, resolved as a friendly gesture to the case of calling all cars, I will see that Rio Grande dealer in my neighborhood tomorrow. Witnesses positively identified the Newman brothers as the two men who had been molesting motorists along the highway. The shotgun shells found at the scene of the crime were positively traced to the Newmans. Twenty-five minutes after the close of their trial, the brothers were found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment in Folsom Penitentiary. County Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars to cancellation on broadcast 261. Regarding a murder, suspects in this case are now in custody. That is all. I'm on. Narrator Frederick Lindsley bidding you good night for Rio Grande. Next week at this time, Rio Grande will present the case of the blind man's block. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.